Uh, as Brianna said, today I just want to talk a little bit about my experiences using uh, Team Foundation Service uh, to manage your application's life cycle. Um, my name is, let's uh, redo that one. All right, my name is Tim Starr, and I'm a principal consultant, um, a .NET architect here at InterTech. Um, I'm also a Visual Studio ALM Ranger, and that's um, basically uh, I work with a bunch of the Microsoft uh, field professionals, so the folks actually out there uh, using and doing con consulting with um, the ALM tools and Visual Studio in general. And um, our task is to provide out-of-band solutions for common problems that are adopting, that are blocking the adoption of using Visual Studio for your ALM. So uh, this is something I, I tend to do uh, not between 9 and 5. It's kind of on my own time. I, I meet a lot of passionate, hardworking folks from Microsoft, um, and that's uh, really been a terrific experience, a uh, chance to actually work um, directly with the folks that are writing the bits. And just for your information, uh, Microsoft does, in fact, use uh, these ALM tools internally as well. So not only are they writing the tools that uh, we use every day, but they're using them themselves to build their software. Okay, I'm also, uh, let's see, I do some uh, consulting and training on mainly on the Microsoft test tools. Uh, formerly in a previous life, I was a development manager, so uh, ALM was a big thing back then. It's still a big thing today. Uh, let's see, I got a bunch of certifications that don't mean a whole lot, and I'm a three-time uh, Microsoft MVP in Visual Studio ALM. Today, I just want to, uh, we're not going to dive deep into anything really, um, but we're going to kind of get a high-level overview, overview of all of these things, starting with a little bit of uh, Team Foundation service. And we're going to take a peek at just a sample Azure website, and the point is not to learn about the code within the Azure website. The point is just that we're going to be managing um, the builds and deploys and that sort of thing. And we're going to look a little bit at configuring the Azure portal to work with Team Foundation Service. And then we're going to go a little bit deeper, and we're going to um, set up uh, three different kinds of builds. We're going to do a continuous deployment, uh, gated check-in, and then we're actually going to um, connect to Team Foundation Service locally and run a build. Okay, so first, uh, why, why would somebody consider using Team Foundation Service rather than Team Foundation Server installed on-premises? And the big benefits uh, to me, anyways, are the first, primarily, uh, the cost of entry. Um, Standing up Team Foundation Service and getting all the SharePoint and the SQL Server and all that good stuff lined up uh, can take some pretty serious hardware. It can take some pretty serious planning. It's uh, not by any means a trivial task, um, so it, it usually takes some consulting dollars um, or a whole lot of reading on your part to do things right. Um, so rather than that, the argument and the idea behind Team Foundation Service is Rather than um, that big upfront investment, let's uh, distribute this over time and just consider this an operating expense. A couple of the other benefits, though, include uh, the simplified geographical distribution. And by that, I mean if you've got development teams spread around the country or the world, um, you don't need to go worrying about poking holes in your firewall and setting up proxies and that sort of thing. Uh, it's also available anywhere. Uh, as a part of the Rangers, we were uh, using Team Foundation Service for all of our collaboration, and boy, was it convenient um, that regardless of which customer I was at, I had access to uh, the source code and to the documentation and the, the bits we were sharing, so that was awesome. Windows Live ID authentication. Uh, I'm going to leave that as a benefit for now and not say much about it. The reduced maintenance cost, uh, definitely nice to have the team responsible for running Team Foundation service, also responsible for the maintenance of it. Um, you don't need to worry about installing service packs or anything like that. That's all done by the Team Foundation service team. 
And then uh, also, and this kind of goes into the capital expenditure when you're standing up your team foundation server on premises, you need to be worried about failover and redundancy and um, keeping the system ticking so it's highly available for your crew. And in the uh, team foundation service world, that responsibility all falls on to Microsoft. Uh, and then some of the uh, downsides, uh, limitations, and differences between between running um, Team Foundation service versus the on-premises installation. Uh, one of the, I guess, two of the bigger ones right now are the uh, SharePoint integration is not supported for the initial re release, and uh, lab management as well as the reporting services are not supported for the initial release. Uh, maybe a, a couple other limitations that are a little uh, Oh, yeah, one more I, I would call a pretty major limitation is the project template customization. Uh, that's not available at all in the initial release either, which means you're um, stuck with using one of the off-the-shelf templates that are available to you. And then uh, some of the smaller limitations are things such as uh, custom control integration. Uh, Intertech does a lot of uh, TFS consulting, and we've written some custom controls to uh, work with uh, TFS and for things like time and that sort of thing, and that's not supported. The Windows Live authentication, um, I, I would consider both a benefit and a limitation. Um, that's, that's your only form of authentication right now, and that's the way it's going to be, I believe, in the initial release. Uh, no uh, Backup, that's right. Uh, backup, that's going to be solely the responsibility of the Team Foundation Service team, and uh, for a lot of folks, that's, that's a difficult pill to swallow. Um, a lot of dev teams like to be in complete control of what's going on with their code assets. And then finally, if uh, if you're in a place where the uh, connection to the Internet is not dependable, well, then your connection to Team Foundation Service is not going to be dependable either. Um, okay, and then just a, a couple of spots you can go for uh, maintenance. Um, there's in the tfs.visualstudio.com. There's uh, news such as new features that are available and that sort of thing. And then there's also a link to... Um, to ping if you're having problems with TFS and if you're not sure if they're internal, ex external, or where they are, um, you can get the status of Team Foundation service by going to that second URL. Uh, another thing I wanted to notice when I set up this talk, it was in uh, preview mode, and it's not in preview mode anymore. And along with that, the URL to the Team Foundation service has changed. And uh, one of uh, the visual studio, he's a ranger for sure. I think he's an MVP as well. Uh, Jesse wrote a blog on how you can uh, more easily update your visual studio, your team essentially, to point at the release version of T Foundation Service rather than the preview version. So um, this URL will point you in that direction. Okay, now I want to go uh, into demo, and the vast majority of the rest of this talk is going to be uh, demo. And I just wanted to mention I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip I think, just one step here, but it's uh, uh, going through this. It's pretty impressive. Um, we're going to create the Team Foundation service. We're going to create a project. We're going to add a solution. Um, we're going to set up Azure for continuous deploy and then set up uh, several different flavors of build, and we're probably going to do this all in less than uh, an hour. Um, and I think this is pretty representative of, of what folks that want to try Team Foundation service would go through just to go out, get connected, get a feel for what it can do for their team. So pretty impressive. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is if, uh, just for the sake of going through the motions, if you're, you're going to, um, you need to register um, for a Team Foundation service account. That's done at tfs.app.visualstudio.com. Uh, you go out here and you, you, you do have some control over what the URL name is, so if you wanted to put in your company name or something like that, I, I think I used uh, Intertech Azure User Group, for example. 
Um, I'm not going to hit OK because I know that already exists. But from the time you hit this until the time when you're actually registered is going to be about 30 seconds. Okay, so then the next step, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to actually go to this new account that's been created for you. So I'm going to do that next. And that would be the Intertech Azure User Group dot Visual Studio dot com. And that's what's changed is the Visual Studio dot com. It used to be, I think, something like TFS Preview. So we're going to go there. And then uh, just for the sake of uh, if things go horribly wrong during the demo, I've uh, left a project that's uh, ready for me to use um, in case we have any problems in Azure or in Team Foundation Service, which I don't anticipate. But uh, the thing you do after that, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a team project. You give it a project name. Call it the ALM Azure User Group, optionally a description. And then, as I mentioned, these are the three process templates that you're um, that you're allowed to choose from. And, and at this point, they're not customizable. So I'm going to just go ahead and use the Visual Studio Scrum template. Say create project. And if things aren't too busy out there, I should be back uh, talking within about four to five seconds. Okay, so my project is created, and uh, the promise from the team is we're going to absolutely love this. <laughs> Isn't this kind of funny? Okay, so I'm going to navigate to my project now. And uh, what comes up here is an uh, uh, unconfigured dashboard, and uh, this is basically the user interface that we're going to use now to start. Um, this is basically a replacement of the uh, web user interface, the web access for TFS. So I just want to, uh, I don't want to go through a ton of things here, but I do want to hit on a handful of the highlights. Um.